The title of this video is what it is. Today I want to go through my favorite books of 2019. Very belated. Hello, probably half the people here are doing favorite books of 2020 so far, but here I am going through with my late content. And I have a stack. So I'm gonna try and give you like the briefest synopsis I can with a couple points about why I really enjoyed it. That being said, I did not research these books before I started this video like I typically would, so if I don't remember anything about them, just know that I like them a lot, but I don't know why. Anyway, let's start off with a poetry collection called Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Tristan Matier. So this book I describe as sort of a poetry book, but almost like an art journal. So it's got poetry, here, which is great because it's formatted like half of it is from the author's point of view and half of it is from the point of view of Aphrodite and it's very interesting and very well written. But then this reads like an art journal, like the artistic pages are like very scribbly and like cutouts of stuff and it's just gorgeous and has the best messaging and it's intersectional feminism. Like this is super cute, every scar is evidence of growth so it's just very feminist and uplifting and about love and I thought it was gorgeous so some of them are pretty short like milk and honey type stanzas and some of them are more drawn out highly recommend loved that poetry book I'm gonna be saying the words I loved this and highly recommend a lot so let's just get that out of the way I loved all of these and I recommend all of them another book I loved last year was a lesson in thorns by Sierra Simone this is an adult romance book about this group of friends that when they were little they used to hang out a ton because their parents were all friends but then they all grew up and drifted apart there were some mysterious circumstances around that but then whenever they're all adults they all come back together to this estate that they had grown up going to and there's like this mysterious garden and it's a romance book because all these characters are kind of pining for one another and thinking about their childhood and I don't know just horny <laughs> so it's a polyamorous romance there's male male and female female relationships and just everything in between I went into this completely expecting that it would would be just smutty and that's it and I was okay with that but this book was so much deeper than that and the writing style is so gorgeous and the pining in this book is so exquisite a lot of people love this book and I totally understand why it is very worth the hype it has such cool and intricate character relationships and it's so well written as well as pretty steamy so I really enjoyed it there's a whole series about this the second book is controversial but we're not talking about book two we're talking about book one I loved it this next book is probably my favorite book of last year other than a different book I'll talk about later which you could probably already predict because <laughs> it's everyone's favorite book. Anyway, I also should say that like none of these are ranked in any sort of way but this one is definitely toward the top. Source- hold on, moment of silence. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I went into this book knowing very little about it, so I almost want you to savor that and not know that much about it. But at the same time, the things I love about it are things that are like the selling points. So I don't know. This is a book about a girl named Elizabeth who works in an enchanted library. She keeps track of all these books that are lifelike and they belong to magicians who her whole life she has been told are very dangerous. But when she gets caught up in a crime that potentially involves magicians and her book, she has to go to the city and really get out of her comfort zone and interact with a magician named Nathaniel and they have to work together with a slew of things that come their way and she ends up realizing like oh I've been living in the middle of nowhere and I'm very ignorant so she and him start to get closer and it's very magical and there's a demon who's just like my baby. Oh my gosh, how else can I sing this book's praises? The writing style is so atmospheric. The main character is tall and she mentions it so frequently and it's just like an authentic part of her character. The love interest is bisexual and the main character has panic attacks. Like I just saw myself in every corner of this book from this girl who loves reading to her being tall to oh my gosh, she was just awesome. And this has my favorite trope of this main character who is really quiet and really owes the world nothing and yet she's just so purely good and wants to do good for people like that's the reason why I love Shatter Me and that's the reason why I love this book among a million other things but this is my favorite book ever it's so beautiful and if my synopsis didn't sell you I have this copy with a fan art on the back cover and let me just show you real quick Read it! It's so good! The next book I loved is a graphic novel called Woman World by Alamander Dollawal. This is a book that is little vignette stories about a world where men are no longer and it's equal parts exploring that in its realness and like what would actually happen but at its heart it is just 
full of memes. <laughs> I think this book originated as like individual panels that she posted on Instagram and now it has developed into just like a full-fledged storyline and such a great cast of characters. So feminist and so body positive and so intersectional and so many times this book made me laugh out loud. It's a great look at what society would be like with women in control but it's also just so downright hilarious. Like there's a character who's a little girl so she's never seen men because she you know is the younger generation generation. It's like the grandma in the Lorax knows what trees are but the kids don't. And she finds this DVD of Paul Blart and Mall Cop and she's like, is this what all men were like? That doesn't sound funny but it's so funny and I loved it and this author is incredible. This is just peak humor. So if you want a book that's equal parts fun and also thought provoking, I loved this. What I want to talk about next is a short little series. I have Prince Charming and Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. These are both YA contemporary books. This one comes after this one but you could read them independently if you wanted to. I highly recommend reading them both though because they are the ultimate feel good, quick, enjoyable reads. They are both royal romances. So this first one focuses on Daisy whose sister is engaged to the prince in England. <laughs> so she gets thrust from this life of normalcy to having to go across the sea and you know deal with that whole thing and it's this messy, funny, authentic character who's just used to her small town life being thrown into a spotlight and having to navigate that sibling relationship. And then also there's like a little smidgen of romance in here with with, I think it's a Scottish setting. Yeah, Prince of Scotland, not England. I apologize. And when I tell you you could read this in one sitting, it is just so cute and fast. I adored it. And it's that type of fun and lighthearted contemporary that isn't gut-wrenchingly cheesy. It's just easy and speedy. So love that. And the sequel is about a girl named, I don't remember, it's been so long, Millie. Millie is from America but she goes over to Scotland to go to boarding school and her roommate is Princess Flora. So it's enemies to lovers female female romance where it's set at like a Scottish boarding school. Once again, so fun, so quick to fly through, absolutely beautiful angst and pining for one another. If this author wrote 50 more books in this series, I would be down for it. They're just such a romp and literally you could read them in a day. The next book is a graphic novel again. This one's called Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. I thought that was French at first. I was like, Ugh. So this might be my number one hands down favorite art style ever in any graphic novel. The way that this is written is so artful and the pink is so subtle. The way that this reads it's almost like a movie like the way it transitions from box to box. Some of them are just incredibly well done. There's a whole mood to it and an ambiance like it seriously feels like you're watching a movie or like looking at a movie storyboard in a graphic novel format. But I didn't even tell you what this is about. This is about a high school girl named Freddy. She has a girlfriend named Laura Dean who's on again off again with her. Laura Dean cheats on her a lot and belittles her so they're constantly breaking up and getting back together because Freddy really admires her and Laura Dean is older than her so she kind of idolizes her and it's one of her first serious relationships and so Freddy just keeps going back to her because the glamour of first love and high school and all that jazz. So it's about this tumultuous relationship as well as Freddie and her friend group and the way that she has to evolve as a person to recognize her self-worth and why she keeps getting back together with Laura Dean. This book seems to be love it or hate it but for me I thought it was such a good coming of age story and especially with the way that the art style worked and the way that you see Freddie develop over the course of the book it's just gorgeous. And this book made me feel a certain way because it showed a female-female relationship just like so normalized and it's not a healthy relationship but it was also just kind of cozy. That probably made me sound crazy but the way that I felt when I read this is just a memory that will always stick with me because it was such a gorgeous book. I really really enjoyed this one. You have to know into it knowing there's flawed characters because you can't just read this as like a gleaming love story. It's not but I adored it. I hope you do too if you decide to pick this one up. Okay here we go. Here we are. If I could pause the video and have you guess what my favorite book of last year was I'm sure you would say this but Miss Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I don't even know how much I need to talk about this book because I feel like everyone has just said that this is the best book since there hasn't been a best book since this. It's just the best book. But I'll give you my little spiel on it and then we can move on. This is a adult or new adult romance about this kid named Alex. 
It's set in a parallel universe where a woman won the 2016 election and she's running for re-election. Right before all that campaign efforts happen, Alex, the first son, or the son of the president, gets into some cahoots with the Prince of England. It causes a publicity scandal that the first son has drama with Prince Henry, so they have to go on this little friendship escapade to make everything look to the press that they are best buds, but in reality, they can't stand one another. So it's like a rivals to lovers, parallel universe, like political-ish, coming out-ish, male male romance. There's nothing that I can say about this book that hasn't already been said, but the way this book made me feel when I was reading it, it was just such an escape from the world. It's a world I wish I lived in. Whatever parallel universe this is from, I would like to be there. It was uplifting, but also really deep and explored a lot of different themes. I sobbed for like an hour and a half reading the ending of this, so it just really resonated with me. Seeing someone stand up in front of the entire United States of America and be like my name is Alex I'm bisexual and having that be a thing that's normalized and encouraged and not something that is marginalized or frowned upon something about it just really stuck with me and really mattered to me this book is hilarious this book is lighthearted this book is inspiring like I cannot hype it up enough I will forever give five stars to anything Casey touches because their writing is flawless it is so true to what I don't know what we are Millennials it's so true to what Millennials sound like and text and talk like. Everything about this book, I want to give it five stars. I love it so much. I got a couple more romance books up on deck. One of them is The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. This is a book about a woman who is an app developer for dating apps and her competitor is another company whose spokesperson is a man who ghosted her once. And so when they see each other at an event for these companies. She and him end up being together a lot because their businesses run parallel to one another and it is glorious. Rhiannon is such a badass woman of color. She's got a cast of other women around her that they all support one another and it's so wholesome. The only way I can describe the relationship is modern. Like this has such a keen eye on like consent and gender stereotypes and having mindful discussions about things. Like this all is just so healthy and so exquisite. And every little aspect of this book just shined. Even the side plots and the side characters were so relevant to today and I think it was just such a tasteful book and it was equal parts great characters and equal parts great smut so loved that let me pause my dad's calling me i'm balling who's calling the other romance book i have to talk about is the unhoneymooners by christina lauren christina lauren continues to just dominate the romance sphere they're always so great this is a book about a girl named olive who is attending her sister's wedding she and the groom's brother are the only people who don't eat the buffet there it turns out the buffet makes the entire wedding sick so the bride and groom who are sick insist that olive and what's his name Ethan, the brother, go on the honeymoon in place of the bride and groom because it's non-refundable. So they get a free vacation because they're the only ones not sick. The only twist is Ethan and Olive cannot stand one another. So they're on this free vacation together, posing to be a bride and groom, and they cannot tolerate each other's presence. So it's enemies to lovers, so quirky and so interesting. It's a vacation setting and it's light and fresh, but also angsty and a lot of witty banter. I thought it was precious. I really like the family ties as well. I love how Christina Lauren books are raw. Like these characters are messy and they're candid, but you still feel that gleam of like, oh, but I wanna be them. Like I want that type of relationship, even though it's not perfect. You can just get lost in these books and see yourself in it and it doesn't feel like complete fiction. I just enjoyed my reading experience of this so much so if you're looking for a nice summary read this is awesome i'm gonna mention this passingly because once again we know i really enjoyed queen of nothing by holly black this is the third book in the cruel prince series which is wildly popular it's a ya fantasy book about this woman or girl <laughs> named jude who's human but her sister is half fey and when she's young that half Faye, father of her sisters, goes to the human world, kills her parents, and abducts her entire family to go to the Fey world. And from then on out, she has to live in the Fey world as a human amongst all these fairies who hate humans and they're very deceptive and cruel. Hence the cruel prince. She meets the prince who is 
cruel. <laughs> and this is all about just Jude carving out a place for herself in this world that won't accept her and getting deep into the politics there and trying to find loopholes to <laughs> interact with the crown and all this politics and scheming. This is the final book to the series. I thought I did it justice. I know there's some mixed opinions. It's pretty short for a finale, but I just thought it was a fun time. I really like these characters. They're probably some of the most interesting YA characters right now. They're deep and the way that Jude thinks is incredibly smart. The plot twists in this are definitely unexpected. So Holly Black is a talented writer. These characters really stand off the page and if you haven't started this series yet, I would recommend it. However, keep in mind that the fan art that exists for that series makes it look better than it is. It's good, but it's not a shatter me, you know? <laughs> Another book I loved is a graphic novel called The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a middle grade graphic novel about a prince named Sebastian who is gender fluid. So some days he's Prince Sebastian dressing up in his prince outfits and other days they like to appear like a woman and wear dresses but it's something that they have to keep really secretive because no one really understands or accepts that so he becomes friends with this dressmaker. I forget her name. I think it's like Francie or something. Francis. And she understands Prince Sebastian and makes clothes for them and it's so sweet. This was just such a feel-good book where it explained this concept in a way that was accessible to kids but also just so simplified for anyone to read it and it wasn't preachy. It was so sweet. The ending of this book just gave me chills because it was so wholesome. This was an absolute standout book for me last year and I highly recommend it. Another book I really liked was The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Skrutsky which I feel like I've talked about so many times. It's like I read this book three years ago. So this is a YA dystopian sci-fi book about a girl named Cass. Cass is from a family who works for a science company that breeds these monsters that guard ships underwater because this is set in a dystopian world where like all the ice in the world has melted so the oceans have risen so water travel is the main way of transportation and pirates have resurged a lot because of that. So she's going to become one of these trainers for these monsters that her family developed and on her first solo mission she gets hijacked and this pirate ship takes her and wants to use her to protect their ship with the monster rather than protecting like cargo ships or cruise ships or anything that's you know good. This is another female female romance and when I say enemies to lovers I mean it is knife at the throat only one bed trope hate each other's guts enemies to lovers. The girls in this book are just so resilient and so human and they face such moral issues that it's really interesting but it's also just this really fun sci-fi book. My camera died but I have to go on my walk in 45 minutes so we gotta wrap this up. Back to this book. This book is so imaginative I feel like it could be a tv show or a movie like Percy Jackson level because the world is so cool and the characters are so dynamic. This is a duology and I can't wait to read the second one. I absolutely adored this first one and I'm just saying if you need superior enemies to lovers the next book is possibly my favorite romance book of last year. This is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I hate the title so much. Don't go off of the title. Go off of how many freaking sticky tabs I have annotating this book. This is a book about a woman named Kristen who has uterine fibroids so she has chronic pain surrounding her periods and her uterus. She's basically infertile and she lives in a lot of chronic pain because of her condition so she's planning on having a hysterectomy in order to have a better quality of life. But Kristen is such a fun character. She she has a business creating like merch for dogs like t-shirts and all this stuff and she's just completely unfiltered so fun to read about and she meets Josh who works at a fire station and she's mutual friends with him via her best friend so they start to have a growing connection and she's really attracted to him but she doesn't want to commit to a relationship with him because he's a family man and he wants a lot of kids and she knows she can't provide that for him. So this book is a perfect balance of the lighthearted romance that I love with witty banter and a character who is just so unafraid to speak her mind and gets herself into sticky situations because of it. But also it talks about fertility and family and wanting to distance yourself from someone because you feel like you're not going to be enough for them. And it's so deep and this book will make you laugh. It'll make you cry. I'm currently reading the sequel to this which is not as good because I just love love Kristen as a main character. She's so much fun and so realistic. The romance in this book is angsty and exactly what you would expect it to be but I also loved it because this character has 
issues with her period, she and Josh talk about it frequently and he'll ask her like, oh, are you in pain? Like, what can I do for you? And it was just a whole new level of sensitivity and caring for someone when you're that intimate with them to know those types of problems. I don't know, maybe my bar is low, but I just thought it was so cute and also so meaningful. So I really, really, really liked this one. I was gonna say, speaking of books I like, here's another one, but these are all books that I liked. Here's just another one of those. Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This is a YA contemporary book about a girl who lives on a really secluded island with her twin. It's got a little bit of magic in it. Her twin has a magical ability. Before she turns 18, she's either going to find out if she has one as well or if she is the only person in her family line who doesn't get a magical ability by their 18th birthday. And so she is in this transitory period between high school and leaving the island to go off to college, wondering if she's gonna get this power before the end of the summer when she turns 18. Also in this story, this is kind of weird, so stick with me. This island is a go-to destination because there's a rare bird that migrates through there every year, and so all these tourists come through to go see that bird, and with those tourists brings a love interest. The main character is really trying to figure herself out and then it's also like a little speckling of romance in there and then a deeper message at the end but I want to keep it vague because this book has a lot in store even though it's really short. I just loved the vibe of this book. It's a secluded island. It's very moody. It's not dark but it's definitely atmospheric. The female-female relationship was so cozy and so sweet and supportive but it also had really deep topics at the end and especially dealing with family relationships and how the two sisters get to know one another better. This is the first I've read from Katrina Leno, but I want to read everything she's written after I read this one because it was just so fabulous, so I highly recommend picking this up. Another book I devoured was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Once again, sticky tabs, hello. This is a historical fiction book about a kid named Daniel who has a father who works at this bookstore. In that bookstore, he finds this really rare magical book called The Shadow of the Wind. He falls in love with this book and goes out on a mission to read the rest of the author's works but then discovers that mysteriously all of his books have vanished and the shadow of the wind is like the only remaining book from this author so it delves into finding out why that is which sounds boring but this book is incredible. The writing style is so rich but it's not overly dense and difficult to read. It's just gorgeous. Like the reason why I have so many sticky tabs is there's so many memorable quotes. This book is deep and it's really one of those books that I would recommend to other book lovers. It's one of those stories that just comes full circle and there's no detail left untouched. I give very few books the title of masterpiece but this definitely fulfills that role. I just cannot believe how emotional this book made me and based on the synopsis I honestly thought I might unhaul this because I was like I don't know if I'll like that but I'm so glad I gave it a chance. It is absolutely magnificent. Daniel is such an interesting character to follow and I'm not a fan of mystery but the way that this unfolds and the way that you get to love these characters and just grip onto every page trying to find out what happens and why everything is the way it is. This book's captivating so you you will love this, I guarantee it. And you can find this in a ton of secondhand bookshops because it's pretty popular. Actually, I thought I had a whole other stack of books, but that was it. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about the books that really made my year and were worth the hours I spent reading them. I really want to know what was your favorite book or books of the year. I'm always looking to hear what everyone thought is the top tier, best of the best. These are always the funnest videos to watch. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking around. Bye.